What's going on everybody? My name is Azmi Hongos. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Nikon FM2. Now a boomer once said they don't make them like they used to and I gotta agree with that because the Nikon FM2 is perfectly balanced like all things should be. I think what the camera did for me was not so much about the features but about the philosophy about photography right because the FM2 brings everything down to the fundamentals of photography without giving you more or less. Your ISO, shutter speed, and f-stop. I'm gonna be talking about that at the end because this is a review. So let's start off with the build quality. I'm just absolutely blown away by the build quality. The material is chosen, the design is just so elegant that if put into anyone's hands, they would know exactly what to do with it. It's a nice weight. I love the weight. I put this around my neck for a few hours. Didn't even bother. After a few decades, it still looks absolutely pristine. Like I'm looking at this and it looks brand spanking new. Sure, there's a few scuffs, but nothing that would ever indicate that the camera is useless. I love the color scheme as well. It's a very well-chosen silver and black. The bottom of the camera has a few ports. So you can add accessories to this camera. The most common one is a hand grip with auto rewind. I'm not a big fan of that. I think that this is a family camera. The coolness comes from rewinding and doing everything manually. The batteries that it takes are like these really flat batteries, I believe. And what's cool about the Nikon FM2, if the battery dies, it's just for the meter. You can continue shooting like regular. Just remember your Sunny 16 roll in case your batteries die and you'll still be good to go. Regarding the tripod mount at the bottom, I wouldn't say it's dead center. It feels like it's just like off center by like 10 pixels, which can be a little bit obnoxious if you have OCD, but I didn't put this on a tripod mount too often, so it wasn't really too much of a bother during my review. The grip, non-existent. Uh, it's actually a bit slippery, especially if you have wet hands or you're in the outdoors where it's humid. The top of the camera, standard buttons. It doesn't give you anything else. You have your lever to release the film once you're done. Your top hot shoe mount in case you want to add a flash. This is one of the few cameras that I found that has a 1 in 4,000 shutter speed. That also has to do with the internal honeycomb that's inside the camera, which allows it to do this. 1 4,000th of a second in something this old is like, wow, how did they achieve this, right? You also choose your ISO from the top dial. So depending on whether you want to overexpose or underexpose regarding the button and the lever, the lever, it's a good size. You're never going to find yourself digging into the camera too much. It's just like a great length, not too long, not too short. What might be annoying to some people is that there's kind of like a lock feature so that you don't waste frames. The first few times that I had this camera, I didn't realize that I had to hold it down just a bit so that it would release the lever. So I thought I had broken the camera for a second but you just gotta hold down the button just a bit so it releases it and then it releases the film. I'll link down a YouTube video that was very useful to me. Lastly, you have your stock counter, which lets you know which film you're on. It's really easy to load this camera. I'll link down a video below too. For me, I shot Lomo and Portra just because I think Portra's a really good like standard film stock that most people can see the result from. You know, I think the camera really affects the way that you shoot a certain film stock. You know, you shoot a film stock in a new camera and you don't like that camera, it might give you a different feeling about the films. So I think having like a good standard camera like this to base a review on is actually pretty good baseline. The FM2 also has the ability to do double exposures, which I was not able to do during my testing. In addition, it has a timer, which I think is great or, you know, just your family goings. Let's talk about the internal viewfinder. Once you look through the camera there is a little circle that you're supposed to align to make sure that you're in focus i used it it's pretty accurate it has to do more with skill i still miss a few shots i don't know like i got a little bit confused with the circle like am i in focus out of focus you really got to look around the edges of that circle to know if you're in or out of frame the more you practice the better you get at it but i still messed up quite often also when you look internally into the viewfinder you get your shutter speed and your f-stop I personally shot um, with a 50 millimeter, which, you know, I'm always debating if 35 or 50 are better. With something like this, where I'm gonna take it out on the street, I think I should have gone with the 35 millimeter. But what's also great still about the Nikon, and I, I'm a little bit jealous, they can still use like more modern lenses for the Nikon mount. 
So if you really wanna do that and try out new glass on this camera, you have that opportunity. I didn't have that opportunity, but it's something that I hope that I would be able to do later down in the future. Before I get started on my dislikes about the FM2, let's look at some results. So you've seen the results. I hope that you like them. Um, hopefully it gives you an idea about what you're gonna purchase. There aren't too many things that I dislike about the camera just because it's so simplistic. I say probably the biggest annoyance is when I'm shooting portrait. I have relatively medium sized hands, but when I like try to grab the shutter wheel, I would have to dig extra hard and it's a little annoying. I think this also has to do more with the lens, but I was just being crammed into everything just a little bit too much, except for the lever, you know, it's perfectly fine. I could use this all day and not be bored with it. Moving on to point number two, which I think is a little bit more important is the price. It's a very simple and elegant camera. But if you're barely starting off in film photography and you never had a real basis, I look at this camera on eBay and the price is just a little bit too steep. I personally would never recommend anything over $100 for a beginner if they plan to get into film photography. I think that the Canon EOS 300 is an excellent choice and there's other Nikon cameras that are excellent as well, Pentax. You have so much choice, right? But to spend anything above that, I can't think like I'm gonna get into film photography and then a week later or two weeks later you get bored, then it becomes hard to sell. This has a really great resale value for sure. But I don't know if the price is justified if you're a beginner. If you're more into like the mid range of clearly shot or you're an expert looking for something that is pocketable and very friendly, like this is a very friendly and cutesy camera. I, I really like that about the build too. It's cutesy, it reminds me of the 1980s. It's a, I'd say a 9.5 out of 10. It's an overall beautiful camera, no doubt about it. This moves me to my conclusion and sort of philosophy about this camera, which is, you know, when I, when I review cameras, film cameras, especially on this channel, I'm always looking for what did this camera do that might've been ahead of its time? Did they add focus points? Did they try something quirky with the lens? They had batteries, so there's a meter. I'm always looking for that one thing. And my friend suggested that I reviewed this and I didn't find anything special to begin with, right? Like why would I wanna shoot something that all it does is shoot photos? But then I remember that's kind of the whole point, right? The base, your ISO, shutter speed, and f-stop is fundamental to photography. It's never gonna change when I shoot more modern cameras, even film cameras that tried something new, there's an abundance of information. For photography, is the eye autofocus on? Is the histogram correct? Am I in the correct focus point? Am I chimping away at another thing with video? Are my zebras correct? Is my focus peaking correct? This abundance of information can just make it a little bit too technical when we're trying to be artistic. And that kind of brought me back down to that. Like this is amazing. Like I wasn't thinking about, you know, I was thinking about the focus clearly, but Oh, is my histogram correct? Is X, Y, and Z correct? It does have a meter that lets you know, so you're properly exposed. But hey, film is subjective and you can underexpose the film or overexpose it in many different ways to get whatever look you're trying to achieve. It also made me think about my current products that I own. You know, I look at my iPhone, at my iPad, at this external monitor that I'm using. That's definitely not gonna last 25 years. 25 years from now, Apple is not gonna give me a software update for my phone. There's not gonna be any firmware for this external monitor. There's just no more support after maybe like five years anymore. But this camera, after decades of use, still works and looks absolutely amazing. The next in the lineup came decades afterwards and it added a bunch of new technology. Wow, they got so much right with this camera. And I would suggest anyone that is a prosumer or pro photographer to pick one of these up because it just, it gets down to the core. You won't be thinking about histogram or focus peaking or eye autofocus. You're just gonna be in the moment photographing whatever you think is important. I think that's uh, that wraps up my review. It's kind of a short one this time because it's perfectly balanced like all things should be. But what are your thoughts? Do you own an Nikon FM2 or the next one in the lineup? Those are all my thoughts and my opinions. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. At the end of the day, I thank you so much for your time and your attention. My name is Asmi Hongos and I'll catch you in the next one.